In today's video, we're going to be talking about Paget's disease. And now this is a disease which affects the modeling process of bone. Normally, old bone cells are replaced by new bone cells in a process called bone remodeling. However, this process in Paget's disease is disrupted. Paget's disease is the second most common bone disease after osteoporosis, and the incidence of it increases with aging. Approximately 8% of the population over 85 have the disease. The cause of Paget's disease is said to be genetic. That means if someone in your family has had it, it's likely you will too. Mutations of the gene known as sequestosome 1 gene has been associated with Paget's disease. Other associations of Paget's disease has said to occur after a paramecovirus infection like measles or RSV, and they can trigger Paget's disease. However, this association is not fully understood at this stage. Let's talk about the pathophysiology of Paget's disease and how it occurs. We have the lytic phase. Here we have increase in bone resorption by osteoclasts and an increase in osteoblast activity in response. The new bone which is produced by the osteoblast is poorly organized. It's structurally weak and highly vascular. And that's because the osteoblast activity is excessive to try and keep up with the osteoclast activity. This phase may also cause degenerative arthritis. Then we have the intermediate phase where osteoclast activity reduces to reach a point where osteoclast and osteoblast activity equalize and the bone remains stable. We then have the sclerotic or blastic phase where osteoclastic activity stops and osteoblasts activity continues. Here we have the unorganized woven bone which is replaced by lamella bone. After this the disease becomes inactive. Paget's disease can affect any bone in the body, however it's commonly affecting the axial skeleton, the long bones and the skull. The symptoms of Paget's disease include bone pain, deformity, osteodegenerative arthritis and pathological fractures. Some patients they don't have any symptoms but a discovery can be made by an incidental x-ray. One of the ways of investigating Paget's disease is with blood tests. So we can see raised alkaline phosphate levels. Calcium levels are usually normal, but there are also low phosphate levels and normal vitamin D levels. X-rays can be used to show bone expansion with alternating areas of these radiolucencies and osteosclerosis, so these patches of white and black. And radionucleotide scanning um, highlight areas of, of active disease and I, it identifies the extent of Paget's disease. Now to manage Paget's disease, bisphosphonates are usually prescribed and prior to this any vitamin D or calcium deficiencies are corrected to avoid hypocalcemia but, um, but if bisphosphonates do not reduce the pain, uh, the likely cause of the pain is due to some kind of complication like osteoarthritis or a fracture. Um, calcitonin can also be used and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs can be for pain management. 